hope for this truck. Ooh, it might be seized up. Dang it. It's not what we wanted to see. Yeah, we got it! Welcome to Ranch Fest Garage. Last video, we got this thing running. Today, we're gonna drive it. First thing we need to do is probably clean that windshield so we can see. Second thing we need to do is get all the mouse turds out from inside the cab so a guy can stand to sit in there. here is to winch this out the only problem is is the trucks facing this way and it needs to go out this way through the door and there's not really enough room to turn it so I'm assuming this thing doesn't turn sharp at all but we're gonna pull it forward as far as we can we're gonna crank the wheel and hopefully get it out that door <laughs> so is the Cherokee anchor the service truck to the Cherokee. I thought that was going to be a whole lot more effort. Okay, you're about to like start going downhill a little bit. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about Cherokee. Let's get the Cherokee out. You're pretty close, but I don't think you're gonna make that turn. No, we're gonna have to get a... Snatch block? Snatch block, pull it back, turn the wheels the other way. All right. We kind of run out of room, so what we're gonna do is snatch block this winch to this pole here. We're gonna pull this back while turning, and then hopefully we can get a little bit straighter shot out the door. It actually turns pretty easy once it's moving, and actually kind of easier than I thought when it's not moving. Let's not tear down the barn, I hope. Yeah, that would suck. All right, remember when I said this was turning easy? No, it's not. Does it just turn easy one way? Yes. Well, it's turning. Uh, what? Nothing good's happening over here. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, just kind of pulling the Cherokee forward. Do we need to anchor again? Well, the problem is, we need more of an angle. We need to be like over here. But the best I could probably do is uh, 
like right next to the, the building. Oh, that's a lot better. You got like two feet of rope. We still good or no? Yeah, you got like a foot and a half a uh, winch left. All right, now we're doing is dragging the Cherokee. Well, that might be enough. I think it will be. Do you think it'll roll forward if you take the winch off? Yeah, I'm gonna turn the wheel first. Is that it? Is it loose? It's yeah, it's loose. It's not going anywhere. That truck probably has not seen sunlight in a long time. This thing's finally out in the daylight. Hasn't seen the daylight in quite a while. So I actually talked to my brother-in-law last night and he gave me a little bit more history on it. Evidently back in the early 90s, he had this thing running and going. So it actually has only been setting for roughly 25 years. Well, maybe closer to 30. Anyway, a long time. But he got it going because his buddy rolled his truck off of a ledge up a canyon nearby where we live. So he took this truck up and he drug it back on the road. He said it had a little bit of overheating problem, but other than that, thing would winch all day long. It drug a 1972 Chev, three quarter ton, four wheel drive truck up the mountain, no sweat at all. So that's a pretty cool story. I'm gonna throw a little brake fluid in this master cylinder just to see if we got any brakes whatsoever. Hell, I think there's still fluid in there. Bob also said the brakes were pretty sketchy. I believe it. Nothing's really happening. I'm not an expert, but I don't think that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> well, this thing's really low geared, right? So like, you probably won't be going so fast that you need brakes. I don't know though. But it'd certainly be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I agree. Yesterday when we had this running, we basically had it hot wired from the battery directly to the ignition on source. So today I'm going to see if the key switch actually works and if we can shut it off and on from inside the cab. That would be really handy and a lot less dangerous. Hey, something happened in here. Are you like turning the ignition up on? Yeah. What happened? The gauge is moved. Holy cow. Oh, I think that'll work. And that switch just barely works. So I'm getting ready to put a little bit more gas in that carburetor. I, uh, I don't think the needle and seat's working too great. So I'm just putting a little bit of gas in it at a time and starting it and we'll see if we can get it to run a little bit longer this time. Okay, here we go. Sounds a lot better than it did yesterday. Yeah, let's get some oil through it. I just wish I could run this throttle a little different. Okay, go ahead. Okay, hold on. I don't know if we ran it out of fuel again, or it should run longer than that. But I ain't gonna make much for much much of a test drive. Plus, it won't idle. Now let's just see if we can get it started one more time. What's it mean when your exhaust is blue? Oil? Oil. But that could be all that shit we put in there that's burning out. Yeah. It sounds pretty good. Pretty sure there's about a thousand mouse turds flung at my face. 
Yeah, go ahead. That was freaking cool. It is so small in here, crived in here, hit my head. I don't know how Grandpa Paul fit in the thing. We made it a solid 50 yards before we ran out of fuel in the float bowl, but it was cool. It ran, it steered. I didn't even have to try the brakes, so yeah, we didn't go too crazy. But we're still fighting two things. We're fighting the fuel system and it's going to overheat because there's no water in it. And then I'll shut the hood. You ready? Yep. cool you're so high and like 90 percent of what i can see is just hood when my father-in-law bought this truck it had a bad engine in it as the story goes he brought a new engine home and it was basically in pieces in a bucket so he was able to get this motor assembled together and put in this truck and it's probably the same engine that's in it today that runs very cool when he first got it this was his daily driver so he was dating my mother-in-law at the time and he would drive this thing 14 miles down a paved road, down a canyon to see my mother-in-law. I can only imagine driving this thing down the canyon, probably had a top speed of 45 miles an hour and it was probably just an absolute beast. Can you put your head all the way up? I can't see this. Kinda. So this is my brother. <laughs> He's over six feet tall and my grandpa would have been around the same height and he used to drive this truck all the time. His head's on the, touching the ceiling. actually a twin truck to this one in town and it is owned by my father-in-law's little brother but he had pretty much the exact same truck as with most big brother little brother the big brother gets a truck the little brother wants a pretty much the same truck and he did but Warren he did his truck up with tractor tires it's got a pretty nice paint job on it and it is just an absolute beast very cool truck when Uncle Warren died, he didn't use a hearse. They actually used that truck, the twin to this one, to take him from the church up to the cemetery. How's it feel in there? I feel big. <laughs> I felt big in there too. I guess my eye line's like top right here, you know? It needs to be. I don't think you actually ran out of gas. I think no, you killed I, it. I was Did pushing I on the gas, but the gas, gas keeps going like this, so. Yeah, you gotta push on it just the right way or yeah. something. It's, it's it, weird. It probably still has gas. You wanna try it again? Yeah. There it is.
so cool. I can't. Woohoo! Woo! Jeez, Mom, you've got that thing almost up to 10 miles an hour. It remembers me. <laughs> I honestly thought I'd never be able to drive this truck, so it's really cool to get it out and drive it, even though it's just short little distances. It's still pretty cool. Thought over the years, if I owned this truck, what I would do with it. And honestly, I would probably put a modern drivetrain in it and do it up that way. Maybe a Cummins, I don't know. More than likely a Cummins. Cummins the world, right? I don't know if that's what this truck deserves. It's kind of got a cool history. It's really cool the way it sits. And it's really cool that my father-in-law built this truck. I don't know if it'd be the right thing for me to own it and do what I want to it. Either way, it'd be kind of cool, but it's certainly cool the way it sits and the history behind it. We didn't get to drive this thing far, but we all got to drive it. It's super cool. So now we're going to go ahead and see if we can back it in to where it goes. Okay, try it again. I think I tried all the gears. I can't see going backwards at all. Like, I can see nothing. This is not going well. You think it's got enough gas? Uh, hang on, let's try, let's put some more gas in it. I don't know what's going on. Is this your first time driving a clutch today? Yeah, it goes and then it don't want to run and... Yeah. You're going to be real close to the edge, I can't really tell. You got a couple feet that time. We're struggling getting this thing in, so we're just gonna winch it in. That way it'll be a little safer. I don't have to worry about hitting the barn. So that's what we're gonna do. this 80 year old truck running and driving. Thanks for watching.